RVing is awesome if you know a few things about what you are doing. And if you don't know what you're doing and you don't follow a few simple procedures, it could mean the worst experience you've ever had while camping. Here's where you made your critical mistake. You listen to anything Howie and Jojo said. Nice boys, but they're a couple pliers short of a tool chest. They're not the ones covered in fecal matter. So stay tuned, because in this video, we are going to give you 10 simple and easy tips to make you a happy camper. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. So some things to think about before you even leave your driveway are what we're going to cover in these 10 and easy, simple tips. Tip number one, keep your black tank closed. This was actually a mistake we made when we first started RVing, thinking that if we were hooked up to the full hookups, we could just leave both of those valves open, both the black and the gray tank, and that was a mistake that we made. So keep that black tank valve closed until your black tank shows that it's full or three quarters full on your indicator system that shows how full your tank is. Then drain your black tank while you're at the campground. So tip number two, if you are leaving your camper for the day or even just for a couple of hours, bring your awnings in, even if your awning has a wind sensor or a rain sensor. Gusts of wind can come up periodically very, very quickly, or it might not work, as we have also learned the hard way. We were in Savannah, Georgia, and resulted in actually a bent awning arm because we got so much rain in the top of our awning that the weight, it couldn't handle the weight and it collapsed one of the sides of the awning. Even though we do have sensors that are supposed to pull in that awning automatically, they don't always work. So if you're leaving, bring the awnings in before you go. Tip number three, be sure to go on a shakedown trip, you know, before the big maiden voyage. And we recommend that this is somewhat close to home. So maybe within a two to three hour drive away from home. So if something happens on that shakedown trip, you're not too far away from kind of that realm of safety or comfort to be able to grab something if you forget something, but it's a great way to get to know your rig, to get to know how to hook up at a campground, but not go too far away from those comforts of home should something arise. And one other little tip off of this is don't go and just buy everything on Amazon that you think you're going to need. That's one mistake we made is we just went all out on Amazon and purchased everything we think we would need. We are excited, ready to go. Don't do that yet. On your shakedown trip, you're gonna find out really what you need and what you don't need. You can always go to Walmart and pick up what you absolutely need if you are in a pinch. So tip number four, know where your fuses are located in your rig. We cannot tell you how many times in the last four years of living the RV life that we have paid a stupid tax by having to have somebody come out and take a look at our rig when it ended up just being a blown fuse that we overlooked. So familiarizing yourself with your rig, knowing where your fuses are located for the different components in your vehicle, and then also carrying a spare fuse kit. We've learned that the hard way too, where we had a blown fuse and we didn't have a fuse to replace it with and had to go make that trip to Walmart to get fuses that we didn't have on hand. So we'll put a link in the description below to the fuse kit that we carry with us now that has a lot of different types of fuses, styles of fuses, and different amp ratings on fuses so that you will most always have the fuse that you need when you need it. Tip 
Tip number five is do not overload your fridge with items. You want to make sure you have airflow around the sides of your fridge so you don't want to jam pack that thing. The most important thing to remember is if you have an RV style fridge that runs off of both propane and electricity, which most RVs do have, some newer models will have residential type fridges and those work just like your fridge at home. But the majority are a special type of refrigerator that they install into RVs. If it is packed to the gills, you're not gonna have cool food. So it needs to have some room around the items for airflow to circulate, to be able to keep things chilled. So when you're packing that thing up, just remember, you can't jam pack it full. You need to leave some space between your items. And some people even put in a fan to circulate air around the area, either a battery powered fan or plug in a fan to put in your fridge and that does help. Tip number six, know your height and your length of your rig. And this is something you don't want to just take from the manufacturer spec sheet. Actually get a tape measure out, measure it for yourself and know exactly what your length and your height is. We did not do this. We knew what our spec sheet said and we were sweating some bullets when we went to Zion National Park and realized that there was a tunnel with very tight clearances yeah. and we weren't sure if we were gonna fit through. Yeah, so I would also get a label maker and just tape your height and your length to your dash just so when you're going under those bridges, you can look down and know what it is and you're not freaking out when you're going under the bridge. Tip number seven, always, always, always use a water pressure regulator. So this is for when you're hooking up at a campground and you're putting that water hose into a spigot or into any sort of a city water hookup. RVs do not have piping like in houses where you have a PVC pipe or in older homes that might have had copper piping. The tubing that is inside of RVs is just that, it's a tubing. It is not made to withstand those higher pressures and you do run the risk of a potential flood on the inside of your rig if those pressures are too high. Yeah. So you always want to be able to make sure that you don't have high water pressure flowing through your rig. And our favorite water pressure regulator is an adjustable type where you actually have a gauge that shows you exactly what that pressure is so that if you do feel like you don't have enough pressure to take a shower or to wash hands, you can dial it up a little bit without it being overloaded. Tip number eight, make sure you have a surge protector. We use a Progressive Industries surge protector that we absolutely love, but you wanna make sure you have one of these because you don't want to fry any components inside your RV. Things like the inverter for your RV or any of the circuit boards, th these can be very expensive components to replace should there be an electrical malfunction because of where you're plugged in at a campground or if any type of surge should occur. So do yourself a favor, get a little bit of peace of mind by ordering a surge protector. And we can put a link in the description below for the one that we like to use couple hundred dollars can potentially save you a couple of thousand dollars in potential repairs. So it's nice to have that peace of mind. And the nice thing is right when you plug these surge protectors into the outlet, it'll let you know right away whether there's a polarity issue or some kind of issue with the campground. And when so. you have that peace of mind, you are a happy camper. <laughs> So tip number nine, make sure that you check both your tire pressure and make sure that those are set according to the manufacturer specifications, whether you're using a drivable or a towable. And then also make sure that you have checked the tire age on your vehicle. This is essential if you have a used RV that is maybe secondhand to you. Tires should be replaced every 10 years regardless of the condition of the tread. So knowing how old that those tires are is very important to that peace of mind 
being a happy camper as you're going down the road. Nothing is worse than having a tire blow out or even a tire go flat while you're towing your camper trailer or driving your motor home. So that can be prevented with knowing how old your tires are and replacing them when they age out. And here for the final last tip, tip number 10, how not to use a sewer hose. Hello out there! Change gold, <laughs> Dakota. <laughs> Here, froggy, froggy, froggy. Okay, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> don't look like that. You're so scared. I'm not scared. I just you're like scared. Just don't want them to jump on me. <laughs> you're gonna have to touch them anyway. They're gonna jump. Oh. Come here. Whoa. Ah. Ah, they peed on me. Should I kiss him? Ah. All right. Is this where the saying comes from? <laughs> a frog in the hand is worth two in the bush. Oh wait, no. That's a bird or something like that. <laughs>